Hey there, it's Ben Housel here, and here in this tutorial we're going to be having a look at how we use the range selection tool to set a pre-specified duration when we're adding titles down to the timeline. Now we can do this for the built-in titles for Final Cut Pro 10. We're also going to have a look at how we do that for things like adjustment layers um, and other kind of generators in Final Cut Pro 10. Now this video is sponsored by FX Factory, um, so we're going to be using the Ripple Tools Complete uh, plugin to add an adjustment layer, and then we'll also have a look at how that can be useful um, when you're adding your basic titles um, so that you can set the, the contrast and the brightness of your background in some very cool ways to, to help your title stand out. So contrast is always super important when you're adding titles um, to your videos um, and this will help you um, even if you don't have that particular plugin um, to kind of set up your titles, add keyframes for things like color adjustment and then also use the range selection tool to specify the duration of your type and your kind of adjustment layers when you're adding them to the timeline. Now if you like these kinds of uh, video tutorials for Final Cut Pro 10, then please do hit the subscribe button and the notifications button. Uh, but without further ado, let's dive in and have a look at how we work with the range selection tool, editing titles down to the timeline. So here in Final Cut Pro, we're gonna be looking at how we save time adding titles to our timeline. So the first thing we're gonna do is just add a very basic title. So we have a time lapse here um, of Lahaina Pool in Maui. And basically I wanna add a title uh, that starts a little bit after the beginning of this uh, time lapse and then ends just a little bit before the end before we cut to the next clip. So I'm going to come back to the beginning of my sequence here and I'm using the JKNL keys uh, to move around my clip here. So L to play forwards, K to pause and J to play backwards. And I am going to come to a point just a second or so into my clip, so a second and a half into my clip. I'm going to press I to mark an in point. And you can see rather than selecting the clip, this is selecting a range um, of the clip. And I can then play forwards. And my title's been on the screen long enough. The sun has come up. And I'm going to press O to mark an out point. So now what I can do here um, with this selection made is if I do Control or hold down Control and tap T, it's going to add a title within that range that I've selected. So now you can see on screen here, I have the basic title added. I can select that. I can go in and modify the position of it, uh, move it around. I can change the options here. So I can type in my title and we'll add kind of basic 2D style here as well. So basically um, we can add our own title to the timeline um, using the in and out points or the range selection tool. So we can do that same function um, of in and marking in and out on the timeline by using uh, the range selection tool here. So if I come to this clip, if I mark out a range and then hold down control and tap T, you can see it's gonna place that basic title there. Now, if we've generated our own custom titles or we wanted to add different things to the timeline, uh, then we can do that too. So in my titles here, I have some titles that I've created. Um, so I'm gonna go for this animated title uh, with a kind of outline. And actually I've got a tutorial on my channel for how to make this as well. Um, if we right click on this and make it the default title, then if we do Control and T, it will add that animated title um, to the clip rather than uh, the default title that we already had set up, so the basic title here. Uh, we can also do it with titles that we haven't set up as a default title and we can do it across multiple clips. So if I drag across these three or four clips here. Notice I'm not starting right at the beginning or end of those clips. And I'll come to my 3D cinematic titles here. And basically if I come to this clip and double click on the title with that range selected, it's actually gonna add that title across that range um, of the clip. So I'm gonna go back to my selection tool here. I had my range selection tool selected. And you can see now in the title, I can change the background color, I can turn the background off, so it kind of mixes with the, the background itself. And I can change things like the title opacity uh, and a number of other things there as well. But basically, with the range selection tool, we can add any title um, to our timeline without having to go through the process of dragging it down and then stretching it out. We can just decide with the range selection tool where we want to add it and then also just by double clicking we can add that title um, across that range on the timeline. So the next thing to mention here is how we can use that to add 
some other things to our timeline as well. So with this title at the beginning here and also with this outline title, you'll notice that they're not particularly easy to see um, once we've actually added them to the timeline. So if we come across this animated title, what I want to do is add an adjustment layer um, that's exactly the same duration as that. Now with the selection tool, if I select and click here, it's actually going to select that clip. Um, and now if I come up to my ripple tools complete and double click on the adjustment layer, it's actually going to switch that title out um, for an adjustment layer. I don't want to do that. Um, but that's also a cool technique as well. What I want to do is um, hover over this and press X and that will select the range of that clip that I have selected. And now if I double click on the adjustment layer, it will add another layer um, actually above that um, in this instance and I can just drop that below there. I want the adjustment layer to be below my title so it affects the video um, below but not the title itself. So this is where it gets really cool. So with the adjustment layer um, I'm going to come to the middle of my clip here and you can see with the text that we've got here it's really hard to read over the detail of um, the kind of video in the background. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to my effects across here on the right. I'm going to come to blur and we will go to Gaussian blur. I'm going to drag that onto my adjustment layer and you can see now that adjustment layer for the duration of the adjustment layer is applying a Gaussian blur, which is great, um, but it does mean that it will just kind of pop up at the beginning um, rather abruptly. So what we need to do with the adjustment layer is come to just as the title uh, is made here, and I am going to go up to my video panel here. And in the video panel, you can see I've got the Gaussian blur, and I can change the amount of that blur. So I want to leave this blurred at this particular instance but perhaps not this blurred we'll just kind of blur it until we can see that heading popping up nicely and then I'm going to add a keyframe I'm going to add a keyframe here and then I'm going to come back to the beginning and I'm going to turn the blur right down so basically what's going to happen now is as the text comes in the background is going to blur out and you get that nice effect um, of the title um, on top of that text. So as it animates out, I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm going to keyframe the blur. So I just clicked on the little diamond shape up here and then I'm going to dial the blur down to zero at the end of it. So now things will come back into focus um, as the video ends there. You can see I've got a little bit of shaky camera work at the end there. So this is the end result with the adjustment layer. And the nice thing about this as well is because it's an adjustment layer, if we take this, I'm going to hold down Command to select both of these. I can copy both of those and we'll drag these across to here. And I'm going to stretch out this clip. So basically you can see now we've got the in-focus pool at the beginning. It will blur. And then as we come to the end of that uh, short section, it will fade back in and come back into focus. So basically we can use an adjustment layer below our type or our title to add that focus between our clip and the background. So here, I'm just gonna copy this back to here, I actually just moved it. We've got our blur happening here. We can also do the same with color adjustment as well. So if I come through to this clip, I am also going to add onto my adjustment layer, we'll go right to the middle here, uh, some color adjustments. So I'm going to go to the exposure and I'm going to increase the blacks, drop down the whites and just kind of darken this background image off a little bit so that text has a real nice level of contrast. So basically here I've got these settings for my clip. I don't want them, uh, the clip to be that dark and so abruptly dark um, right at the beginning there. So you can see it's almost like a flash to dark. So I want to add keyframes to that too. So I'm going to come to the beginning again. And I'm going to add a keyframe for my color board here. So we're using specifically the, the color board option here in the color correction under the triangle. And I'm going to come back to the beginning. And then because I've added a keyframe here for things like the blur and for the color correction, I'm just going to type in zero to send all these options back to zero under my masters, shadows, midtones, and highlights. And now when we come to the beginning, 
we'll get a nice little dip of the color rather than that a kind of abrupt change and you can see it animating as well in our color board up on the top right so the key there was to kind of set what we wanted when the animation was finished so where we wanted it to be dark and then to go back and kind of set things back to zero and we'll do the same at the end we'll add another keyframe um, just a short little bit from the end come to the end and then we can set these all back to zero and that will mean now we get this nice blurring of the background image and then once the title's been on screen we can read it um, it's kind of clear and obvious it will animate out a bit of a shake of the camera um, but that's okay and you can see that works quite nicely for modifying the color in the background and just making that text really stand out from the background so anytime we select one of these if we press X rather than just clicking on it um, we'll actually get that range selection which is how we get that option for bringing up another adjustment layer that's exactly the same length um, as the type or the other kind of sections we have there so one other example I thought of for this and I'm just going to do shift command and a to deselect everything is that if I do shift and Z to show my whole, whole timeline sometimes you might want to add something to the entire timeline so for instance the guides um, that we have here in the ripple tools complete um, option here if we double click it's going to add a very short section of those guides but we might want them throughout the entire video um, to use as guides so if I delete that if I come to the beginning of my clip I can mark an in point and then to come to the end of my clip if I use hold down the function key and press the right hand arrow it will come all the way to the end of my clip and again now I can mark an out point and if I double click so now if I come up here and double click on guides you can see it adds guides to the whole video so if I select my guides here you can see under my type options I've got some uh, rulers that I can show as well I can change the guide color and I can also change the position of the vertical and horizontal guides um, that we have here as well and there's a whole bunch of other options that we have up here as well for different tools in the ripple tools complete package so again using the in and out points or the range selection tool we can add guides to a very um, specific area of our video and we can really control that nicely also if we press X over the top of any video that we have here it will mark out as a range um, that video and we can then do control and T and it will add that title that we set as the default title um, to match exactly that video length so you can see I can press X control and T and it will make a title exactly the length of that video so some of these titles that I've made here are made in Apple motion if you want to make your own titles from for instance the basic titles or lower thirds then basically one thing uh, you can do here is if you click on the lower third you can right click on that lower third and go to make a, a copy in motion which will mean that you'll have your own version of that title so if you're customizing things designing your own titles then you can really easily kind of go into motion change a color change the type and then it will be part of that default title if you set it as a default title in Final Cut Pro 10 so there's a few tips for using the range selection tool um, for marking out areas of your timeline either on the main timeline um, or across multiple clips um, and on connected clips if you have any questions about working with a range selection tool about adding titles on connected clips or about using some of the, the different tools in the ripple tools complete um, kind of package where you kind of get this range of uh, tools for making adjustments on your main timeline then leave a comment below otherwise thanks for watching and i look forward to seeing you on the next tutorial